Voltaire said, Judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. And he makes a very good point. It's often said that the quality of your life is defined by the questions you ask, because the quality of the question determines the quality of the answer. So it stands to reason that if you can get better at asking questions, then you can get better answers. Better answers result in a whole host of benefits. For example, being better informed allows you to make better decisions. But being better at answering questions doesn't just mean getting better answers. Obtaining information is just one outcome of questioning. Questions can be used for controlling a conversation. This can be particularly useful during an argument or negotiation. Questions can also be used as a way of showing interest. Showing an interest in other people can help to build relationships and showing an interest in a subject can open up opportunities to become involved. What's more, questions can be used to explore people's personalities or to diagnose problems as well as being the common way of testing people's knowledge, such as exam questions. Questions can also be used to encourage further thought or used to emphasize a point. For example, this could be done using a rhetorical question. Finally, ever heard of an icebreaker? Well, questions can be used to encourage a discussion amongst a group and promote conversation amongst people who don't know each other. So it's worth considering how skilled you are at asking questions, because although we all know how to ask a question, do we all know how to do it properly? Questions in their simplest form can either be open or closed. Closed questions are questions which require a short answer, often one word, and chosen from a limited set of possible answers. For example, yes or no questions, or multiple choice questions, or a question to get a specific piece of information. Let's look at some examples of closed questions. Would you like an ice cream? What flavour would you like? How much does it cost? In contrast, open questions allow for much longer responses and therefore potentially more creativity and information. An open question asks the respondent for his or her knowledge, opinion or feelings about something and the response is usually more qualitative than quantitative. They usually begin with what, why or how, but tell me and describe can also be used in the same way. Here are some examples of open questions. Tell me what happened when your ice cream was stolen. Why did you not report it right away? How was your day out at the seaside? There are a few advanced questioning techniques such as leading questions, probing questions, funneling and rhetorical questions. Let's now take a look at how they work. Simply put, leading questions are where you lead the respondent towards giving you a particular answer which is more favourable to you. For example, if a salesperson asks you, how many widgets do you want? Then the salesperson has assumed you want some. To answer the question with a number means you've been led to an outcome. However, you must use leading questions with caution because they can be interpreted as rude and manipulative. Probing questions are questions which force the respondent to think more deeply about the information they recall for their answer. For example, if you use a word like exactly in the question, it forces the respondent to be specific. Funneling questions allow you to cleverly funnel the respondent's answers. You do this by asking a series of questions that become more or less restrictive at each step. You start with open questions and end using closed questions or vice versa. For example, have you been to any good parties recently? What did you do at the party? Was any food provided? Did you eat jelly? The questions in the example become more restrictive, starting with open questions which allow very broad answers and at each step the questions become more focused and the answers become more restrictive. Rhetorical questions are often characterised by being questions which do not require an answer. Sometimes the question is unanswerable, but usually the answer is obvious. So obvious, in fact, that you wouldn't answer it. It has been asked to demonstrate a point and said for effect. OK. Do you want to know a secret skill about questioning that is left out of many courses? It's the importance of silence. When you ask a question, no matter how awkward you feel, try to be quiet and let the other person answer. As we've just discussed, unless you're asking a rhetorical question, the purpose of a question is to receive an answer. So be sure to give the respondent the time to answer. 
And while we are talking about responses, how you interpret the response is equally important to the question. For example, you could ask the best question in the world, but if the answer is a lie or you don't get an answer, what good was the question? Watch out for respondents who only partially answer your questions or stall when responding. Politicians are well known for avoiding the question by giving an unrelated answer. So consider what type of response you are expecting and have a suitable method for making a record of the answer.